Lynn. I'm the artist behind Paint and Repeat. And welcome. Tonight we're painting this fun goldfish. And before we begin, I will go over the supply list. Uh, when you signed up for this class, you do get two outlines. You got one that fits well on an 8x8 and one that's a little larger for a 12x12. 12 12. Um, but you can size this up or down. And before we begin, you are going to want to get this transferred or sketch your own goldfish on this. Um, after I do the transfer, after I, I draw my goldfish, I do go over the outline with Sharpie. Uh, so it's nice and bright on screen here. You don't have to do that at home um, unless you want to and it helps you and then you can absolutely do that. Um, but I just want to explain why it's uh, done in Sharpie on the screen here. So that is the first step. Uh, if you have not transferred that uh, before we get started, you can pause this video. Um, the wonderful thing about YouTube is that you can pause, rewind, fast forward uh, whenever you need to as we're working. So use that to your benefit if you need to. Now the supply list here. Um, you need a canvas. Let me I always try to clean off my desk and I never quite get it clean enough. All right, so I'm working on a square canvas. This of course um, is just a fish with a background. So you could certainly use any size canvas. It doesn't have to be square uh, like I'm using, but you've got transfers for eight by eight, which would also fit on the eight by 10, uh, 12 by 12 would fit on here. But of course it doesn't have to be this size. So feel free to shake it up a bit. We are working with acrylic paint. So you're gonna to wanna to have a cup of water, paper towels, um, paint brushes. As far as paint brushes go, I use a lot of flat brushes and brown brushes. That's almost all I ever use. So grab some of those and that's what we're gonna be painting with. As far as paint colors go, uh, the list is black, salo green. I've got an aqua. I've got orange. I've got deep yellow. And I've got white. And I absolutely love this color palette. It's a limited color palette. It works really well together. And so I'm pretty excited about that. Oh my goodness. Trying to move my paint back out of the way and I'm knocking everything over. It's not going to be that kind of night. We are going to have a good night. All right, so those are the paint colors. And I did suggest perhaps a palette knife, uh, acrylic dotting tool. When I say acrylic dotting tool, this is what I mean. Um, we're just going to use that for some texture with the bubbles. Uh, if you don't have one, you can use any object with a round um, edge. So you could use a kind of paintbrush. Honestly, you could use your finger. We're just going to use that for some bubbles. Um, the heat gun or hair dryer can be handy. I use this a lot just to speed along the process. And this is traditional hair dryer. You know, with the hair dryer attached off. Um, you can use a normal hair dryer. If you've got a crafting heat gun, you can use that. If there's a cool setting, that's always the best option. And that's pretty much all you need to get started here other than a palette or something to put your paint on. So go ahead and gather up your supplies and we will get started in just a second. Right, I had to, I got my paint brushes and my palette and I left them on my other table. So I had to zip across. 
across the room and grab those. All right, are you ready to paint? If you're painting with me, feel free to say hello if you're on here live or even if you're on the replay. I love to get notifications and kind of see who's watching and painting. So feel free to say hello. What we're gonna do for this background, a majority of this background is phthalo green. So I'm gonna get some of my phthalo green here on my palette. I'm gonna get some aqua off to the side there. I'm gonna get some white. I'm gonna get a little bit of black. And you're gonna work from the back and upwards within variations of this phthalo green. And so before I get started, I'm gonna mix up some colors just so I can dip right into them as we're working. So I'm gonna get phthalo green and a little bit of white and mix that up. Parts of both. Lighter color pre mix. And over here, I'm going to get phthalo green. Now, I don't want to do equal parts black because black is a, a very strong pigment. So I just want to darken this a little bit. I dark I said be careful not to go too dark. So I'm gonna mix a little more of my green in there. All right. And over here, I might lighten it a little bit. All right, so when we add color to this background, I'm gonna start with this thing. And I'm just gonna kinda add this green all over and some big swishy sections as most of this is going to have this base to it. All right. Now, if you want to paint this just like my sample, um, it is deeper and darker down in this corner and it is lighter kind of up in this corner and through the top. And so that's what we're going to design here. So we've got our our mid-tone phthalo here. I'm gonna get a little bit of this darker color. I'm not using the black, I'm using the mixture I made with the deeper phthalo there. And a little bit of that light shade just to get the great shade down there. We want this corner to be pretty dark. So what I did was used my pure phthalo and my phthalo plus black. Hello, hi Glenna, hi Deanna. I'm glad you guys are joining tonight. I don't always get a lot of people popping on live, so it's always nice to see people say hello. How's the weather in Virginia? Is it cold? It's supposed to be stormy through the end of this week up outside of the United States. All right, so down here I've got my darker tones. There's a little splash of light in there. Maybe that's a reflection or something like that. And my deeper shades are down here on the left. In the middle, I've got phthalo, and I'm going to put phthalo and the lighter color on my brush. So a lot of this here in the middle is brighter and lighter than my color out of the tube. So I need to count for that and go a little lighter here in the middle.
We're using a lot of this lighter color that I already mixed. Now I do like to go over my edges because I don't want there to be a weird edge around my, or outline around my fishy. Uh, so I am kind of going right up to that area and over the edge a little bit, but just be cautious not to lose your lines. And then up towards the top, we are going pretty light. So I'm gonna dip right into some white and just add some back and forth white up here. And I am gonna mix my white in with my light mixture. And I just, I'm kind of using crisscross strokes. This is just a real abstract background. You can make it as blendy or as unblendy as you want. I tend to go for my brush strokes, but that is a personal preference. Some people like things really smooth and blended. I'm not usually that person. Okay, I'm going to get just a pinch of yellow on my palette here. Um, we don't use a lot of this yellow in the background, but I'm going to take... Um, now, phthalo green and white will make this aqua color. Um, so if you've got some mix, I don't have much left. I'm going to dip right into my aqua and into some white. And I'm just going to kind of change the tone of this just a little bit. So this is more, when you add in a little yellow, it turns into more of a mint. And so, up here at the top, I do just have a little bit of mint tone in there. And this is just for visual interest. You can as much or as little as you want. It's totally up to you. I think it just adds a little a little something. I just kind of mix that in there. So just kind of play around with the, the colors that you have on your palette. The more layers you have, the more visual interest you'll have here. Style is very loose, so if you're more, more of a realistic painter, you can certainly take your, your time a little bit with the background. Need a little more of this minty color just for fun. I might even mix a little bit of my dark green with a pinch of yellow just to make it a little more grass green. Maybe just add a couple little bits of that. I 
this background is all about depth. We just want it to feel like there's you no know, varying depths around, around Mr. Goldfish. Us, he might be in a small tank, but to him, it might feel like the ocean. You never know. All right. So that is it for my big brush. So I'm going to go ahead and wash it off. Anyway. Probably say this a lot on my videos. I'm trying really hard to take care of my brushes. I'm bad. So bad about that. All right, next let's get some color on this fish. Uh, before I start applying color, I want to just clean up this area. And the reason why is because uh, warm colors, regardless of the brand, regardless of the quality, um, warm colors, red, oranges, yellows, that side of the spectrum tends to be pretty transparent. Those pigments, um, the pigment themselves, tend to be more transparent. So um, because of that, I am going to clean up my edges. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfect, but I don't want the pop on the background. So I'm just going to clean up the spins a little bit. A lot of this will cover anyway, but I don't want him to look green and spooky. I want him to be nice and pretty. And this is just kind of a messy thin layer of white here. I just, it helps me see where I'm going and kind of block out some of that green. Kind of like makeup concealer, but for a painting. All right, now we are going to have lots of options for um, but I am actually going to start with his belly and uh, I'm going to make this let me see if I can click on my image here so just for a moment or you know if you've got the supply list printed out you can reference that but I'm going to make him a little larger so down here underneath um, I don't have a picture but underneath his uh, belly and underneath his mouth we've got a, a white area there. Um, and that white is not pure white. Um, it's toned down um, a little bit of that uh, grayish aqua. So that's what we're gonna work on first, is we're gonna kind of get that shadowy area in there. And so we're gonna need white, a pinch of aqua, and black. And white and black together are gonna make gray. First, I'm going to mix that light gray. I'm sure I'm on camera here. So here's my white. I'm going to go very, very light with my gray or with my black. Black is a strong pigment. So just the tiniest bit is going to change your white. Okay. So this is pretty light as far as gray is concerned. We don't want this to be, um, we don't want to look at it and say, that's gray. We want to look at it and say, ooh, his belly is white. And there's a shadow. All right, so I've got this gray. I'm kind of going to spread that out. And then half of it, I'm going to add this little green, this aqua to this gray and have kind of like uh, a shaded tone there. All right, so we've got three colors to work with. We've got white, we've got the gray tint, and then we've got the aqua gray tint. So what I'm going to do dip into this white paint. Now this guy is textured, okay? 
So we don't want nice smooth lines here. So I'm just going to kind of tap in this white. Um, and there's a line here where that line kind of follows down um, to this curve where his gills are. We're just going to tap some color in there, some white. And then I'm going to tap, um, using the brown brush, I'm just going to tap some white down here on his belly. All right, and I'm gonna go up here to that white gray mix, that really light gray, okay? And then I'm gonna pull some taps of color in there. Now this might be hard for you to see on camera. I might darken it up just for the sake of the video. Do not feel like you have to do that. So just tapping in gray and I'm going to go into that cheap that aqua gray shade up in a few strokes of that and then I'm going to darken both of these colors just a pinch with some black now you can see that black went a long way on the aqua shade and it's going to go along with in that white. So as we layer up, we use less. And then this is just my, my gray. So when we add that aqua, it just makes it kind of a, a cool gray. So now we've got that scale texture down there and then up here, um, kind of along the top, I'm just going to add a few little blobs of white texture just to lighten it up right in here because this would be lighter than down here. All right, now, um, depending on your paint, it might dry up on you. I don't have very much. I'm gonna add just a pinch of water to this. These two colors, I might come back to those later. If they dry up, we can always mix them. But now, I'm gonna turn my palette, and we're gonna focus on some of these oranges. Most of this fish uh, is orange a lot of orange in here so uh, I'm just going to take this pure orange and this is going to be my base color for this guy and so everywhere that's not that shaded white and gray I'm just going to put a layer of orange I'm not going to mess with the eyes right now but just a solid color It's okay if your orange is a little different from my orange, just whatever you've got right out of the tube. And this guy has a lot of texture, so if you've got heavy body paint, that's a beautiful thing. You can apply this in nice heavy strokes. Sorry, I hate moving my microphone. I hate the sound. To me, it's like nails on a chalkboard, but I kept bumping it, so I felt like I should adjust it there. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do even his fins on the back there.
His mouth you can do with orange as well. A lot of his eye is orange, but I'm going to leave that open just so I don't lose it. All right, so lots of orange here. Now this is our base color. We're going to add highlights and shadows, and that will help make him look a little more realistic. And so I'm going to start with the shadows. And a lot of the underside of the fish is shadowed. Uh, so I'm going to pull some orange out here. And I am going to use black for my shadow. I don't use that. Sometimes I like to use um, a complementary color, the opposite color of the wheel, uh, which for orange. But today I'm going to use colors. It's more of a dirty shadow. Um, on the sample there, it wasn't a, a, a clean, bright color. So you seen black will dirty up this orange a bit, and that's kind of what I want. I want it to be dirty. All right, so I might even go just a pinch darker. All right, so here's my two colors just to compare. This is my orange out of here is my orange with a pinch of black. All right, now everything I do for texture on this guy, uh, I'm going to think in terms of scales. So I'm going to use my round brush and I'm going to kind of dab color in these places. So underneath here, definitely got an orange shadow. So, um, you know, he'll have a fin coming out here. I want to kind of just dab some steel shapes down here with this darker color. He's going to have a little bit of this darker color on the fin and right here. Now pretty much the back half of this fish here from his body. So if you picture this being kind of the front and this being the back uh, is shadowed. And so I'm going to pull these shadows so just dabbing in some scale like texture from about halfway all the way to that tail. And then at the base of his fins at the top, it's a little darker, so I'm going to add some of this darker orange there. Now over here, he's got some gills going on. Right behind these gills, he's got a shadow. They're just the littlest bit, and I'm dabbing it like they're scales. A little bit behind there. Right. So that's my first layer of shadow there. Now I'm going to make this a little darker. I'll smush in a little bit of black there. I still want this to read as kind of an orangey tone, so don't go too black. But with my darkest shadow, I'm going to add just some touches in here of darker color. And the reason why I can go dark like this is because with the orange on the fish already, um, some of that is pulling into my brush stroke. So even though it's really dark, on my brush, it's not as dark on the fish. All right, so I've got lots of texture there. And then you can put maybe you know, a couple dots here at the bottom. So we added shadow to this back part of our fish. Now what I'm going to do, um, I'm going to keep the tone the same. I'm not going to add any white, but I am going to add yellow. I'm going to change this orange to an orange with a yellow tone. So um, I'm going to start with equal parts orange and yellow. 
I think that's close to what I want. Maybe a smidge more yellow than orange. But we want this to be pretty saturated. We don't, at this point, I'm not adding any white. Okay. So I'm going to take this color. <clears throat> and there's a lot of this kind of in this triangle area right underneath the spins there. So again, I'm going to add some of this kind of in that shape right there and bring a little bit forward to his face all the way down his nose. All right, so now we have two shades to work with, orange and yellow orange, some light needs. I'm going to take some orange, equal parts orange and equal parts white. Oops, sorry. Make some off screen here. So I can add some highlight up in here. So I'm just kind of filling in space with these different tones on this fish. And however we fill these scales in, that's how he's going to look. So I've got orange mixed with white. Then I'm going to pull some of my yellow orange into the white. And this will really make that highlight. Right here in his nose, very light. Now as I'm tapping this, it's all giving, I'm, I'm picturing that scale texture, okay? So tap it in. Don't use smooth brush strokes. We want scaly texture. That's what makes him look like a fishy. And you can play with these colors. Um, certainly goldfish especially, um, you know, their scales are all very, very different. But the important thing is that where he is foreshortened, or foreshortened, not foreshortened, when he's shortened as he goes into the background there, we want it to get darker. That's a shadowed area underneath his body is shadowed. It's shadowed kind of where the fins meet the body. And then where he's closer to us here in the front, he is brighter. You can play with the colors. And there's all kinds of goldfish. Some of them are orange in different parts. Some of them have white spots, all kinds of goldfish stuff going on. Here. All right, we're definitely gonna layer up with his eyes and he's got a fin here and his lips and all of that. Oops, I smudged, I smudged, I don't know. That was almost tragic. All right, there we go. All right, now I'm going to work on some of this fin area. So I'm going to clean off my round brush. I'm still going to work with round. And um, for the fin, we want it to be kind of nice and wispy. Um, there's a little transparency to the fins, and so the first thing I'm going to do is pull some white and some of this aqua. If you don't have aqua, you can mix the aqua with the yellow green and white. 
Okay, I just want this to be kind of thin and I want little hints of it in there. So where um, these fins kind of smudge out at the top, some of this paint's kind of wet, so it might be a little messy. I'm gonna try not to mix it into my orange. If I put the orange, I'm gonna wipe the orange off. I do just want kind of these little glimpses of, you know, what could be the background back there. Same back thing back here on the tail. I want to kind of pull some wispy little lines. You can be as heavy as like, like this. And one area that I need to not forget is that he's got um, a fin right here in the middle. So I'm not going to put any of this aqua color because you don't see that through this fin. You would see, you know, in the transparent areas, you would see fish, <laughs> um, not water so i can just go with a pure white um, and what i can do is since we have to draw in this uh in here i can just kind of draw in that shape right where i want my fin with the white All right, so for the tail, we've got you know, some of this aqua. Some areas where I've got the aqua, I'm gonna pull in some white, little wisps. A lot of this is gonna blend into the orange. Wisps and aqua plus white, and now we're just doing wisps and in the white here. It's pretty heavy up here on the top, so it's a little heavier up there. All right, now we've got our lighter tones to mix in there. So I've got. First, I'm going to go orange and just pull a few little bright orange wisps. Now, we've already got a lot of orange underneath, so I don't need to go crazy with that. And I'm just kind of following the shape of whatever little wispies I had started with. You don't have to follow the, the outline exactly. That's just there to guide you. I'm going to give you a, a sample of where these wispies are. Oops, don't forget this one here. I did kind of forget that with my white, so I'm going to pull some white into there. All right, then we've got orange plus white. So we did orange, now it's orange and white.
And the ends tend to be a little lighter. If you need to, you can always go back and darken, you know, with your pure colors, your pure orange and your pure yellow and your shadow orange. I don't know that this is a very realistic shape for a goldfish fin, but I feel like he has a mohawk for it. I kind of like that. <laughs> so I added some whiskeys with the orange and white, and now the orange, um, the yellow orange and the white is going to come next. Again, keeping the lighter, a lot of the lighter color towards the end of the fins is good. This just adds another layer of color. I'm not adding pure um, orange and yellow in there too much. I don't want to. I don't want to get too color blended. All right. Like I said, if you need to add a little more shadow down at the base, the orange black mixture is good for that. You can always just pull some of that upward. Again, just kind of following the shape of those fins, the shape of the wispies that you have already made. kind of just have a play with it. This is your fish and so his fins can be any way that you like. When I made this I wasn't even looking too much at the sample because he can be a little different. That's okay. All right I am going to start working on uh, his little face over here. And so I need a little more pure yellow because I mixed all mine up. So I'm going to get some of this pure yellow and I want my color this time. I can mix it with a little of that orange yellow, but I want it to be more on the yellow side. Okay. And so I'm going to go around the upper lip here. With this color and just the top of his lower lip. Then I'm going to put my paintbrush right into this shadow mix, and then the inside of his mouth is just this dark shadowy color. And 
And if it's not dark enough, you can add a pinch of black here and darken that up. So yellow over the top lip here, pinch of orange. Yellow across his bottom lip, and then the rest of the bottom lip there is orange. I will lift this up closer to the camera so you can see. Um, so his top lip is mostly yellow. Bottom lip has a line of yellow and a line of orange. Mostly dark shadowy color inside. All right, for his eye, I'm going to use the same orange, mostly yellow. And I'm going to paint his eye here. So there are two circles. I'm going to go over both of those with my yellow color. Over here, um, I'm going to do this little, you know, his, his eyes kind of poke out. I'm going to do the other eye yellow, but we're going to adjust that. All right, so we want to give the impression that this eye has shape. So I'm going to actually go to a smaller round brush so I can be a little more careful with it. So using a small round, and I'm going to get this orangey black color. We're using for a shadow. And underneath this eye, I'm going to pull that shadow color down there. That's really dark underneath that eye. Then a little orange underneath that circle. And then the inside of the eye is black. So we did yellowy. We did a dark shadow, and then I put orange underneath the black. Over here so far, it's just yellow. Now I'm going to grab some orange, and where the eye kind of pokes out, I do want to have um, a little bit of shape. So we've got orange to the right. We've got um, the yellow part of the eye, and in the very front, I'm going to pull a little bit of this black shadow color. That makes his eye have dimension. And then right here, there's kind of a line that goes down to his mouth. All right, so that's how he gets his pokey out the eye. All right, now, just because I'm being picky, he does have kind of a yellowy highlight on the bridge of his nose, so I'm just going to smudge that in there. This is where you can start being kind of creative. Wherever you see highlights and shadows, you can add them in. So I'm going to look at the fit now that some of this is dry and maybe pull some highlight with some white in there. There's an area on my painting that's driving me a little crazy. And that was kind of the bridge over here. So with my orangey brown mixture, my shadow color, I'm just going to pull a little bit of that um, kind of where this underneath his eye all the way over to his gill there. I'm going to wipe off that brush and then we've got the orange yellow color. So 
I'm just going to smear a little bit right in there. And I'm very heavy handed with the paint today. It really is just kind of a thick smear. I've got my orangey shadow color that should be underneath this eye. So I'm going to connect that down here. Connect that in. All right, now before I move on, I'm clean this small round brush, uh, I'm going to get some of my aqua colors. So what did I have up here? I had white and black for my shadowy gray. Mine have all dried out. And I pulled some of that over here and added some aqua so that I got kind of an aqua gray. What I want to do is take the aqua and the aqua gray and just kind of touch in some colors here. So we've got uh, fins, and so I'm just going to, right now I've got the aqua gray. This is a little more muted. Maybe touch in scales up here. Maybe a few scales underneath. I'm going to dip right into my aqua. Again, if you don't have aqua, it's phthalo plus white. I might add just a little highlight on a couple of those, maybe some smaller scales around. Here in the back where it's shadowed, I'm going to tap a few scales in with phthalo. Here's phthalo there. This is just where we're adding, you know, some visual interest. There's no right or wrong here. Just kind of tapping in some stuff. On the top of his eye, I'm going to take a little white and mix it with a little yellow. If you've got some left over from earlier, I really am just going to, to lighten it quite a bit with the yellow. I want it to be kind of a lemon color. And I am going to add just a little highlight at the top of the eye. You can do that on this one too. That just brightens it up a bit. And I can pull a little bit of this lemon with a thin round brush at the top of my lip. Top of my upper lip there. It's hard to see on camera, but in person this looks... It looks brighter. I might pull it in, in some white so you can see it on camera a little bit. Here we go. There we go. Now what I see on camera is more true to what I see in person. So highlight on top of the eye. Um, I am going to add just a little twinkle in the eye. So I've got my white here. I'm just going to maybe add like a little twinkle in there. Kind of went, went big with my twinkle so I can clean that up with that there. All right, from here on out, it's a lot of bubbles, and that is the easy part. So um, for the bubbles, I mentioned uh, you can use 
a dotting tool. So I've got a few of those here um, that you can use. Um, have this available. If you don't have dotting tools, you can use what you've got laying around. So um, a pencil with an eraser uh, would make a good dotter. Um, you know, any pen cap that has kind of a circular shape, you can use your finger. Um, this part is kind of easy and fun. And I'm just gonna play with some of these bubbles and bubble colors. And um, I'll start using a pencil eraser um, now. I don't want, I really don't want pure white. So um, I can take this aqua and bring it really close to white. And then whenever I do this, just kind of twist some bubbles. Now I don't uh, want these to be thin. If you've got thick paint, this is kind of what we want. Thick. Thick bubbles. And so for each shape and size that I've got, I'm just going to add quite a few. And there's no formula, but I added a whole lot on my sample. Smaller ones, I tended to go a little lighter with those. They felt more bubbly that way. Mixing on a little more of my aqua. All right, so that's how what it looks like with the pencil eraser. The dotting tool will end up looking pretty similar. Let's see, I might add some of these gray bubbles in here. So I'm really just kind of mixing and playing with the colors that I have in this leftover. Don't worry about these being perfect because they're not supposed to be. These are very much impressionist bubbles. Here's me with my smaller dotting tool. I've got a really large dotting tool that I can kind of go bonkers here with. Um, in order to make dots, you do want to have kind of a lot of paint mixed in there. So don't be afraid to go thick and heavy with your dots. Add a few more that are kind of this gray green color. And then we're gonna kind of switch gears and go orange. All right, so there's my gray green. All right, now I do want the orange to be lighter. Um, so you can use the white and the orange, the yellow and the orange. I'm not even gonna clean this gray off my brush. I'm just gonna kind of let this play a little bit. It's okay to have a mess, messy colors in your bubbles. Okay, 
And like I said, you can use your fingers. So if you want to get a couple with your fingers, just tap them in with the fingertip. That's fine. Sometimes I think the more you play with it, the more you play with your painting, the more you like it. And if you're adverse to that, you can always kind of go in with a paintbrush too. You know, the, the end of your paintbrush will make some fun bubbles. Once you have these bubbles in there, what I like to do is I'm going to get a nice thin round brush and wherever I've got some of the larger bubbles, I'm just going to add kind of a, a, a color in there. So a lot of these bubbles are already mixed with some fun colors, but just for some visual interest, like around the swirl part of the bubble, you know, maybe where it gives a little curve just add a little twist of color and don't think about it. Just randomly tap into these colors. It's okay. Um, you know, if it's yellow, if it's gray, you just want visual interest. Right, there you have it. This is our Goldie Goldfish. Um, the last thing that I need to do is paint my edges. I've got a lot of black on my palette, so I'm just going to go black edges. 
all the way around. You can certainly paint your edges any color you would like. And then make sure you sign your name to your painting as well. Sign it as your own. But you did it! While I do this, I will um, kind of give a shout out to everybody. So if you painted with me tonight, I would love to see your work. So you can share it with me on any of the socials by tagging me at paint, at paint, rinse, repeat and hashtag paint, rinse, repeat. Um, I do hold my classes here on YouTube. So if you don't mind, um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would love to have you on YouTube calling me. It's free um, to subscribe on YouTube. So go ahead and hit the subscribe button. So all my stuff, I've got free stuff and new fun stuff coming up. Um, and you can also follow me on any of the socials as online. Um, I do have a local studio, so don't get those two mixed up. Although if you are local, I would love to meet you as well. Uh, you can always share with me on Facebook. I've got a free Facebook group and the group is set up so that you can share anything um, that you create on your own as originals or you can share any pieces that you create with me. I would love to see them and everybody in the group would love to cheer you on. So the address is right there at the bottom of the screen if you need it. You can always just search in Facebook for Paint, Rinse, Repeat um, group as well, and it'll pop up. And then, of course, at the end, I like to give my shout out to my supporters and tell everybody about my supporter option. So I have a supporter membership on Facebook, and it's all run through the Facebook platform. So when we've got a class coming up or when you want to to get into some painting, you can go right to Facebook, go to my Facebook page, um, and all the information for past classes and upcoming classes will be there. Um, it's $9.99 a month, and that includes every online painting that I present this month. So, um, for example, if you join in January, you get um, six paintings in January, and one of those six paintings is a supporter bonus, um, especially for supporters. Um, this month, January 2024, our supporter bonus is a super cute corgi. Um, every month I try to come up with something fun as a bonus for supporters. So that's what I've got going on. Thank you guys for joining me. I always appreciate and love when I have people hop on here live. I know it's difficult to chat while you're painting, but always see who I, I can't see who's on live with me if you don't the chat but I can see that I've got people watching live so I do appreciate you guys for joining me um, but here is my finished goldfish thank you so much for being here tonight and I will see you next time have a great night everyone